Okay, um, I'm going to show you how to fit Bluetooth to one of these standalone um, auto changer record players. Um, these have become quite a novelty recently and um, they're fine just for playing singles or albums and that. I mean the audio quality is not brilliant but uh, the, the addition of Bluetooth makes them much more usable. People put them in the corner of the room. And then they can use their phone or, or any device to stream music to them without having to change records. Or if they want to, they can put on a pile of singles and have a 1960s or 70s party. So, there we go. Right, first thing you need to identify, make sure the power on everything's off. And um, this is just the way I do it. This maybe not the absolute correct way to do it, but it's the way I do it. And I know that this works. You need to identify where the cable from the tone arm, from the cartridge, goes through the tone arm, through the bottom of the turntable, and um, comes up to the amplifier. You need to find out which point that actually joins onto. And on this particular one, which is now, but I've actually unsoldered that, but it solders onto this pot here, which, strangely enough, is the tone pot. And the ground from that cable simply solders onto that. The reason I've taken that off is because to make this work what we need to do is fit a switch so that needs to come out from there be joined onto and extended now I use one of these small toggle switches like this and uh, I need to find a suitable place to put this and uh, I'm kind of thinking I might I might just sort of sink it underneath there um, it's kind of out of the way and easy to get to and in the area of the other controls so the cable runners would be quite short now unfortunately when I bought these they didn't supply me with the, the little locking nuts but this this baseboard here is quite thick so I think if I drill a tight enough hole I can simply screw that in and a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place so that and, and what that will do that will switch the amplifier between your Bluetooth device and your um, your turntable. You could, if you wanted, also add an auxiliary port if you wanted a wired connection, but I'm not going to bother with that. So that's that. You'll also need a Bluetooth adapter. This is a little USB one. You can pick these up for a few pounds on eBay or AliExpress or whatever. Um, they're just a cheap little thing and they work fine. They come with a short auxiliary lead like this simply plugs in there and the idea is you plug that onto your uh, audio in on the device you want to use but in this case we're going to cut that off and that will go onto one side of this switch now to power that you will also need one of these what this is this is a, a 12 to 24 volt to 5 volt DC power converter adapter, power supply, whatever you wish to call it. Now you solder the two leads on there, you've got a plus and a minus. And on these BSR turntables they tend to put out um, from the transformer, the, the, the motor winding that runs the motor, they put AC out onto the board which is then rectified down to run the small amplifier in here. So we need to find the point on that board just past the rectifier where it's been rectified to the low voltage DC and we will connect that to these points here again running the positive side of this through one set of terminals on this switch so when this switch is in one position it will just act as the normal record player and when the switch is in the other position it will turn off the record player to the amplifier and connect our Bluetooth module to the amplifier I hope you followed that. Um, this particular one I'm working on here, I want to use the turntable and the amplifier out of this one, but the case is quite badly damaged, and I have another good one here which has a very good case, the same model, and um, the amplifier doesn't work in that one. So, save me messing about trying to repair the amplifier, I'm simply going to take this out and put it in there. I have refurbished this turntable because they do tend to 
stick with age and that is quite simple to do. There is a circlip here. If you remove this circlip you can then lift off the turntable and take out the auto changer um, part here. Clean all the old grease off, use some isopropyl alcohol or, or some gentle sort of solvent. And at the bottom of here is a small roller bearing. Make sure you get to that, clean that up, then apply some fresh grease. Just standard lithium grease or LM grease is absolutely fine to the bearing here and the washers. And then it will enable it to spin nice and freely like it did when it was new. Um, when they get old this grease goes hard and, and you'll find it won't run properly and it will make lots of wound flutter. There's a rubber drive wheel also that runs through a groove on the inside of this turntable and I generally clean that up with some isopropyl alcohol and I also clean on the inside so that um, we make it work as well as we possibly can. The stylus on these are, are two-sided. This one is fine. You can get replacements quite cheaply for about £7, I believe. So if you get one with a bad stylus, not the end of the world. Um, so that, that's kind of the background of it. Um, I'm going to pause the video here, take this apart, and um, then we'll, I'll show you how we connect up these modules and how we fit them. Okay, off camera, I've taken out the two small nuts that hold the, the amplifier board in. Always make sure you're unplugged before you do any of this. Absolutely vitally important. And you should really know what you're doing when working on any electrical equipment. Um, safety first, all the time. Always use a power supply protected by an RCD. Um, we all make mistakes and, uh, you know, you've got to be careful. This is... 240 volts in here and it can kill you so um, got to be extra extra careful don't leave this live when you've got children around just use common sense you know um, these turntables float they're, they're locked down by these two screws for transport so um, I've also unsoldered the wires from the speaker make a note of which way around they go it's just easier to move stuff around so if we just lift this out up here and, oh, what's this going on? Take that mains cable out that's the amplifier let's lift this whole assembly and now you can see this has got a big hole in the bottom so I'm, I'm not wanting to reuse that now let's get that out of the way. Too much junk on my bench here. I'm going to try to tidy up. Anyway, right. This is um, a small amplifier board here. This is our turntable. This is held in place by these two clips and there's a view of the underside. You can grease up some of that mechanism while it's out as well which I would highly recommend. Just makes everything work a bit nicer. I will be doing that before I put it back in. Um, but for now, um, let's just leave it as it is. You don't need to see me grease stuff up. Just gently lay that down. This is where the autone arm connects. It's actually got a stereo cartridge in it, but uh, by the looks of it, anyway. But anyway, just one side's used. There's three wires coming out, so I assume that's the other channel. If it was stereo, who knows? Um, so I guess you could fit stereo amp and external speakers. Maybe I'll try that one day. Anyways, here's our amplifier. This is where our input comes in, like I showed you here. Now I'm going to desolder that and solder that onto the switch. 
So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So let's get our iron on here. And I've wrapped it, put it through the hole and wrapped it around. There we go. Okay. Make a note of where they come off. Now that needs to go to one side of our switch. Here's our Bluetooth cable here, which we also want to use. So we'll take that off. We'll um, cut one end of this off. Like so. And we need to expose the cores. Hmm. Actually have three instead of a sheathing, which is kind of unusual. I assume the red and white are the two and the green's the sheath. I will check that out with a multimeter just to make sure. Let's just strip the ends there. I'll tin them with a little solder. Always get good quality solder. You can buy all this cheap solder, but I've I've never found that it works very well. If you get a good quality solder, it just seems to work so much better. Tin each of these. This is flux cord solder, so I'm not using any additional flux, but you can do if you want. I usually do, it's just, um, it seems to be working fine. Okay, so that's our Bluetooth input. This is our record player input. And we also need an output to go to here. So we need another piece of cable. Now, you can just rob that off of something. Um, I happen to have a roll of it somewhere, which is escaping me at the moment. So I may just rob some off of another wire I've got here, which I think would be the easiest way to do this. So let's get my cutters. Now, I know what I'm going to do, I'll actually pause the video and go and get a piece of the proper stuff. Okay, here we go. Just a two core sheath cable, we only need one side of it. I'll just cut that off. Okay, we just need to tin the ends of that. I always tin my cable before I make a connection, it just it's just better.
tiny little bit of uh, heat shrink on that ground cable. If you haven't got a heat shrink, you can just use any any form of plastic sleeving. Just helps avoid any problems. Hot air station, but you can just use a soldering iron. Shrink him on there like that. Okay. Soldering iron. Now, you obviously need to remember where these come from. And I do. So I'm going to put a little bit of fresh solder on the connector first. Ground went onto this one. Done on there. Let's just open up the other end of that cable. Hmm. Tougher than you think. I'm going to check with my multimeter that the, the green is the ground. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, There is, um, sorry I had a camera problem, if I can get this to focus this close. I don't know if you can see that, there is a small positive and negative marked on there, a plus and a minus. That's where your power supply goes in. So we need to solder to each of those. that aside for a minute. I'm just going to use this standard two core speaker wire which is fine for this. I will use the one with the tracer for the positive.
just got those in there like that. Handy these, you can find a pair, just uh, tweezers, but they've got a little slider down, so you know, you to grip stuff. Okay, get your power on there. Now, we also want this to go to our power switch, and be switched by the switch, and then we need to pick it up from our, um, our power supply, which is here. So, um... I'm going to leave a little bit of slack because we've got plenty of room inside. And what I will do is just separate that, cut that, and that will go to our switch. And then this end can go to our power supply. So, if we look at our amplifier board here, we will see from our motor, the two white wires that come back are a low voltage AC. And they, they connect onto these terminals here. If we turn the board over and follow the traces, we can see they come through here. This is our AC. That then goes straight to this rectifier which actually looks like it's had a bit of previous work done. Um, so if we then turn the board over, we can see here is our rectifier. So it comes out the other side of our rectifier on these two terminals here. And the third one has nothing. What does the third one have? Oh, the third one has nothing. So it comes to our other two terminals here. And these are actually marked on this board a positive and a negative and that is our filter capacitor which in this case works great because there's no noise so we want to connect to a positive and a negative from this board and I will bring them through from the other side with the rest of the wire now remember I use the one with the tracer as the positive and again I would like to tin these first so let's just do that One with the black tracer is positive. Your cable may be slightly different colours. My one, it's those. So. So you're just trying to tuck them around the 
the leg of the capacitor slightly to hold them in place. Don't have to, it's just uh... Okay, I think that will be good. So let's just solder those. There on there. So we need a switch. Now these ones have actually got center off position. Um, need to find out which side is which. So let's just go on one of the centers. So when the switch is pointing in that direction, it means the contacts are made between those two. When it's in the off position, it's not made to any. When it's in that position, it makes center to there. So a center terminal is a common, and depending on which way the switch is, we either make to the right or the left. So. On our Bluetooth, we want power to go to our Bluetooth, which means that we want to join this terminal to this terminal. This is our switch from our Bluetooth, so it's going to clean the end of that. And we'll just tin those two. When I say tin, all, all that means is you apply solder to the wire first. It holds all the strands together. Um, just in case someone doesn't know what I'm talking about. we've done that right let's decide that is our Bluetooth position so those two need to be joined so we'll go through that hole there on that. This one.
Okay, I've drilled a hole uh, for the switch, and as I've got no nuts, like I said earlier, I'm going to have to hot glue it into position. So let me just ease it up into there. Make sure it operates, which it does. Hot glue gun, make sure it's straight. Okay. So there's a, a cable uh, restraint here, which seems to be loose and just floats about. So I'm going to secure that with a little hot glue while I'm at it. Sorry about that, hit the camera. Right. Now I need to place this into the case. So I'm just going to move that off of the bench for a minute. This is my good case with no holes. So let's place a good mechanism. Here's our power supply, our Bluetooth module, and our auxiliary lead. I'm just going to Bluetooth, um, sorry, hot glue them down in the bottom of the case.
bit of surplus wire here. So leave it that. Cool off a second. Okay, we've got the amplifier module back. And these are our speaker wires, which we need to reattach. Uh, this down now we're going to get a cable tie in there in a minute so just for now Shape for this washer, I think my mum I remember seeing two. Push our knobs back on. Now I'm done with this hot glue gun, so let's turn it off. Solder our speakers back and see if we are in business.
I'm going to tie these cables up here with the cable tie in a minute. But let's just see if he works. Moment of truth. Okay, now I don't know whether I'm on Bluetooth or any at the moment, so. Assuming that's Bluetooth. Well, that works. And the other one is Bluetooth. Hmm. It says it's on, but I didn't get the Bluetooth sound. Okay. Let's see if we can find it. Which is a little worrying. It's connected. Let's see if we can um, play something on it. No, is the answer to that. We can't. So why is that? Huh. Okay. I'm just going to stop this video here and find out what the problem is. I think it may be why I come off the switch or something simple like that. Right, sorted that out. Turned out we had this cable, broken core. So, there we go. Check your cables first. Um, right, I've put it back in. I've tied all the cables up. So, we should now be working. So give it a go. Bluetooth right. mode. And have you heard that? We're now in Bluetooth mode. So I'll just start this. I'll just do a short blast and I'll talk over it a bit because I don't want to get a YouTube strike. So you can see that it's now working, working from Bluetooth, and if we switch the switch over, just move him over. And you can now see that it's working from that as well. So that's it essentially, I uh, just got to screw the cover back on, all the wires are tied down, fixed down inside, um, Bluetooth added to a vintage little record player. Thanks for watching.